Hi, I'm Aaron Erickson, one of the co-founders of Workspace. And I'm here today to talk about how much more powerful a platform can be when you engage with product management to help make sure it's customer facing, make sure it's meeting the needs of uh, all the stakeholders, most importantly, the engineers that ultimately need to use uh, the platforms we build. Uh, some of my background from this is uh, working at Salesforce where I was you know, building some of their internal platform efforts, as well as prior companies to that, where uh, I saw a lot of implementations and some of the patterns and mistakes that we've made uh, along the way. So one of the first rules of good platform development is to always start from the place of the developer being your customer. Uh, and, and this seems like it should be obvious, right? You know, of course, the developer is your customer. Of course, they're the uh, main user of the platform. But there's a pattern in a lot of these organizations where uh, it may not be the developer that had the idea for the platform. It may be an effort around cost control, or it may be an effort around standardization. And those things are important. Those things are, are valuable. Uh, but at the end of the day, if the customer doesn't accept the platform, generally it's going to be a very bad time. So uh, hence the first rule, um, developer is your customer. And when you're a product manager, it is making that customer happy that is your first uh, most important job. One of the patterns that you see in, in certain cases uh, where maybe the developer wasn't considered the main customer is you end up in a case where, hey, maybe we were just using another cloud provider, maybe we're on AWS, maybe we're on Google, maybe we're on something else, uh, and we're going to move everybody to an internal developer platform. This is the mandated usage pattern, and it really leads to some things that you really probably don't want, it, the least of which is resentment. You're forcing me to use something, learn something new, what do I get out of this as an engineer? Well, if it's really nothing other than just compliance, uh, it, it is not going to be easily accepted. You might get compliance, but certainly people aren't going to like it. And it's actually going to cause uh, reduced trust. You also start to get things like shadow infrastructure, people kind of disobeying the rules and doing it anyway, which has uh, can actually hurt security. Uh, maybe you're not using you know keys in the right way or you know storing secrets in the right way. Uh, because you are on uh, these other platforms. So again, just one of these things, we always want to stay away from mandated usage. You want to treat your platform as something that you must earn usage of, not that you can just you know, make you know usage happen by fiat. Another kind of common anti-pattern uh, with you know, kind of platform product development is uh, using the build it and they will come idea. Uh, a lot of people like to think Steve Jobs was this amazing person that could just figure out all the requirements uh, in his head and just come out with the iPhone without any customer feedback. Uh, that's a myth. That is entirely a myth. Uh, even the best product managers on earth uh, use customer feedback, do a lot of user testing, do a lot of work to make sure they're building the right product for the customer. Uh, the build it and they will come kind of thesis, this idea that you can just build a perfect product uh, based on one, you know, kind of founder's vision does not work. I don't believe it's ever worked. And, uh, you know, make sure your you know, platform initiative isn't kind of working that way as well. Uh, you know, if it's just something that comes out of some central committee and just gets, you know, implemented because, you know, we have one, you know, big guru person that thinks they have all the right ideas, uh, that's probably going to cause problems. And so that's why, again, you know, having good product management is about making sure that you're building the right thing and making sure it's not just one person's vision that who doesn't have necessarily a, a deep enough understanding of what the customers are looking to achieve. One of the next patterns that happens, um, again, when, when you don't have effective product management is you end up with kind of this, well, let's just do every feature that, you know, somebody happens to want this month. Um, and you're not building kind of a, a holistic product that has sets of related features that make sense. Uh, what you start to get uh, in these kinds of situations are leaky abstractions or things where, you know, kind of one half-baked feature over here, but they don't really kind of hold together. Um, you might end up with all sorts of different parts of this platform that are, you know, just not well thought through. Like maybe the service mesh is automatically configured, but some other kind of thing downstream from that uh, requires a lot of detailed configuration. And it doesn't really start to make sense. It's like everybody's operating at different levels of abstraction. Uh, so getting away from that and thinking about it uh, from a user experience standpoint, even for the developer, uh, is a key way to not end up in this situation where you end up building a Rube, Gold, uh, Rube Goldberg machine uh, by accident. Getting into this, though, I mean, there are really kind of three main kind of forces of, of platform requirements. 
uh, one of them is security. Uh, you know, when you do build a platform, often you want to make sure that it makes it really easy to conform to the security mandates of your organization. You know, doing things like standard standardized ways to do secret storage, doing things like uh, making sure that uh, you know, kind of how you know traffic happens between parts of the system is standardized, easy to comply with. Uh, if you set on a you know, series of good defaults for that uh, and make it really clear how to comply with them, it will make it a lot more likely that you will be able to meet those requirements by you know, kind of stand, you know, using the platform in a standard way. Sometimes there'll be exceptions, but you do want to make sure they're kind of more exceptional when they are truly exceptions. Cost. Uh, one of the reasons, and you know, I, sometimes we don't really want to talk about it, but there's a lot of if you are in an unmanaged platform or you're just using, you know, kind of raw uh, cloud provider stuff, it can be really easy to make costs go higher than what you expect. Uh, if, if a platform kind of nudges folks towards things that both meet their needs and kind of meet the, uh, either the cost requirements or maybe you bought a certain kind of instance in bulk. And so using this um, will be, you know, really, really good if you can do it uh, in a standardized way. Uh, you can actually get some of these goals achieved at the same time as good developer experience where again, with a really good set of defaults, you can solve for all three of these things. And that's really you know, what effective product management does is make sure not just you know, the developer you know, stakeholder is there, that, though that's central, but making sure you can comply with the security and cost constraints that you have and really kind of solving for all those different trade-offs in order to you know, really kind of build the right product. So what do product managers actually do? What is their day-to-day -day and how does that differ from say, you know, your engineering manager or your, you know, developer, you know, building the platform. Usually what a PM will be doing is they will be spending a lot of time with developers. And it's not just, you know, hanging out with them, you know, after work. It's, it's more about looking at their workflow, looking at what they actually do, mapping it out and doing this with a bunch of people, interviewing developers, figuring out what their pain points are, soliciting feedback, building relationships with developers. I mean, this is really important because you want to be able to build trust with the developers that you're working with so that they know that what you're building has their best interests in mind. I mean, that, that is really one of the key things that you're trying to do here. It's not that you're trying to sell them, but it's ultimately that you, you know, they know that you listen to them. They know that you have their back. You're meeting with stakeholders, not just developers, but you're also meeting with your security operations folks. You're meeting with FinOps. You're meeting all these people that have requirements for this in order to you know kind of comply with the standards that you need to keep the company's data safe also to make sure that this is done in a manner that uh, has good unit economics for your organization I mean, this is effective platform usage can really have a positive effect on unit economics of an organization if done well if not done so well it can have a very bad effect i mean i've seen both cases uh, go in those extremes and so that is certainly something as you think about what a pm does is to kind of solve for all of these variables uh, to the degree that they can. You're looking at data. You're looking at data very, very frequently, continuously understanding adoption. Are, are people voluntarily adopting this? Um, are they looking at other options? Uh, are they leaving your platform to maybe use uh, one of the main cloud you know, providers if, if they have the uh, options to do so? Uh, you know, are people, what are the usage patterns? I mean, are people doing big services? Or are they doing microservices? Uh, which features of the platform do they use? Which ones do they not use? I mean, those are all parts of what product managers do is they make sure, you know, understand how people use the product and evolve it based on, you know, kind of what they see working and what they don't see working. The other thing that you're doing, uh, you're doing active uh, developer relations work. And again, I said this at the beginning of this list, but you're always building trust. You're always making sure that people see you as their ally in terms of helping them get their jobs done. I mean, we talk about, frameworks like jobs to be done. The job of a product manager is to make the lives of their customer easier. And that's what active DevRel uh, turns into is making sure that you're always, you know, not just taking the feedback, but being seen and perceived as somebody who uh, is going to make their jobs easier. That, that is what your job is. And then of course, like we've talked about before, managing the trade-offs between features, cost, security, um, and, and other potential you know, trade-offs in the organization. And that, that's just effective leadership almost. But you do get some objections when you're trying to bring uh, product management into uh, initiatives. And I've seen this before. I mean, there's a reason why we have to have talks about why uh, product matters in platform work. Uh, one of them is, well, we just can't afford it. You know, sometimes you might have limited headcount um, and uh, you really only want to have 
uh, engineers. You can barely afford the engineers. We really just can't get that uh, extra PM role. I don't want to release a headcount for that. That's somebody else's job. Um, I really don't think you can't not afford it. I mean, if you build the wrong thing, you will spend all your resources building something that customers don't want. That is far more expensive than just you know, having that effective product management so that you're building something that will actually achieve the goals that you want it to achieve. If you don't think the product manager will do that, that's more of a problem with the you know, way the product management is structured than the idea of having a good product manager. Um, there are cases to be made that maybe an engineering manager should do some of this product management. I think in some organizations that might actually be the right answer. Uh, but the reality is that engineering management is, a, there's a whole bunch of different things that they do versus what a product manager does. Engineering managers are usually really focused on leveling up the career of the people on the team, uh, you know, kind of managing the performance of people on the team, making sure they're not just the right thing gets built, but that it's built in a way that, that meets all the other standards that you need. And, and it's really a different job than product management. I've seen people combine it before and I've seen it almost be effective, but really it's not something I'd recommend. And I think having somebody that's focused on customer needs is going to get you a better result than not. I've seen cases where, you know, well, we are mandating platform usage and therefore, you know, we don't really need to worry about adoption or customers. I've even seen cases where they don't consider the developer a customer, that the customer is a FinOps team or something like that. Um, that's, that's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate because, um, you know, when you don't treat the primary user of a tool as the thing that you need to, you know, please, if you will, uh, you're, like I said at the beginning of this talk, you're going to get a lot of resentment. You're going to get, um, you know, you might get adoption, but it's going to be, uh, people are going to be mad about it. They're going to talk in the company forums. You're, you can see like posts on Glassdoor of companies that have bad platforms where they complain about the bad tools that they're forced to use. I mean, it really is something you really can't afford to do. Um, another objection you'll get, in, and this one is, is, I think, a little bit more credible, is the idea that platform devs are devs, therefore they know what they need to build. Um, maybe, uh, but I actually think platform developers, I mean, people that think about Kubernetes day and night, people that think about kind of the intrinsic pieces of, of a developer platform are probably thinking about different problems than your product managers, than your people that are the or I'm sorry, then your you know, product developers who are thinking about customer features day and night. That is really kind of more important for them. And so really kind of understanding their point of view, which might be you know, different kinds of languages or stacks for the kind of work they need to achieve is really important. So um, I can understand why somebody would make this case. I just don't happen to agree with it. Thinking about metrics. I mean, every product manager that is good at their job will always think about outcome metrics. And the, you know, these metrics on the page, cycle time, MTTR, release frequency, change fail, they are the most, some of the most important metrics that you, that we have uh, in modern software development. And, and certainly a platform, a good developer platform should improve all of those things if it is a successful platform implementation. However, there's one metric that I think that goes even above these that isn't talked about as much, but I think is really critical. And that is lower attrition. If you build a platform that actually helps engineers get their jobs done, helps engineers get, be more creative rather than less, helps engineers sleep at night because the platform uh, builds in some of the things that makes it less likely that they're gonna get paged uh, because of incidents. Uh, if you can take some of that stuff uh, off their you know, mental load, uh, you're going to have happier engineers. You're gonna have engineers that feel productive, that feel like they can advance in the career, that can build the products that they came to your company to build. Nobody came to your company to build um, you know, nobody buys Kubernetes from your company unless you're a Kubernetes provider. Um, and so, you know, being able to have that ability to make better products and to, you know, ultimately make customers happy for the right kind of engineers, that is a thing that makes them far less likely to quit than otherwise. And that's something we all care about today with engineering resources being very scarce. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you coming to our talk and uh, I will see everybody soon. Thank you. Goodbye.